Hello everyone, Stepan here. Today I'll go over a game suggested by a subscriber called Tasif R, and it's a remarkable game played between Kramnik and Pantala Hare Krishna in 2017 in the Gashimov Memorial. And uh, I must say it's uh, a perfect example of how uh, humans should never blindly follow engine evaluations and how uh, problems in chess positions can make humans uh, be imprecise and blunder away positions which are theoretically and engine-wise uh, winning. Uh, in this game <coughs> Vladimir Kramnik had white pieces, he played e4, we have e5 and they enter the royal pairs knight f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5. They go for the closed line, uh, a6, bishop to a4, knight to f6 castles, bishop to e7, now the most common move here is rook to e1, continuing the normal closed royal pairs, and after that transposing to variations such as the Chigorin, Breyer or something else. But in this position Vladimir Kramnik played d3, which is the Martinez variation, which is slightly more passive for white, but it, offer, it offers a different kind, kind of advantage for, for the player with white pieces, and it still gives him enough attacking chances to justify, to justify the move. Now b5 is the most common reply, chasing the bishop away to b3, d6. And this position is uh, somewhat resembling the Archangel Royal Lopez, in which uh, the bishop is immediately coming uh, to the square b7. However, d6 wouldn't have been played in that case, but the bishop would have been on, on c5 instead and coming to, to b6. So after d6 we have a3, another try was a4, the moves are pretty similar and equally good for white. Castles, knight to c3, and now uh, white doesn't go for the mo most common Royal Lopez plan of knight to d2, knight f1, knight to g3, but Kramnik is going for, uh, for the same square another way, knight to c3, e2, uh, g3, f5. So now we have knight to b8, and with this move Pentala Hare Krishna is preparing to play uh, knight to d7, and in some positions c5. We have knight to e2, Kramnik is continuing his own plan, knight b to d7, and the knight is more useful here than it was in c6. But it was needed in c6 to support the center in the opening. We have c3, uh, preparing to transfer the bishop to c2 if needed, and also reinforcing uh, the d4 pawn break, which is the main idea for white in the center in most Spanish positions, most Royal Lopez positions. Bishop to b7, knight to g3, now controlling the crucial f5 square, which is especially weak after the, the light squared bishop has fianchettoed for black. And once the bishop is on b7, of course, it's no longer controlling the f5 square, so the f5 weakness is amplified, and if black doesn't play g6, then the knight will have a permanent outpost on f5. And now black starts looking for counterplay, counterplay c5, uh, rook to e1, rook to e8, knight to f5, or knife to f5, as Ben Feingold would say, c4, advancing uh, on the queen side, and this position is equal. You can see the engine evaluation on the right side of the board. The, the bar indicates uh, which side is better. For now, it's pretty much equal. It's 0 0.2. We have d takes c4, and in this position, uh, Pentala Hare Krishna doesn't recapture. He takes the e4 pawn, which is a better decision. Bishop takes e4, now attacking the knight, so knight takes e7 with tempo, we check, uh, queen takes e7, and now c takes b5. Of course, white can't take the bishop because the knight is defending. So now the material situation is equal after a takes b5, and we have bishop uh, to g5, pinning the knight to the queen, knight to c5, attacking the light squared bishop on b2, on b3, uh, bishop to a2, not going uh, to the c2 square, which is the most common idea, because Kramnik doesn't really want to exchange this bishop because it's slightly misplaced here and it's not really doing that much. It's, it's actually making black's center weaker and it's going to have to either retreat or be a tactical liability at some point. And the other thing is that the bishop is actually uh, much more powerful on this diagonal pinning the weak uh, f7 pawn than it would have been on c2 attacking h7. So now uh, Hare Krishna decides to chase the bishop away, h6. Bishop to h4, g5, and here black has a slight edge, black has equalized, because he has more space in the center, he has more, more space on the king side, however, those weaknesses that the, the pawn advances have produced uh, could backfire, and for example, <coughs> squares such as h5, f5, d5, or a5 are permanently weak now in black's position, not to mention squares such as b4. So black uh, does have the initiative at the moment, his pieces are more active, but the weaknesses in the position could backfire. Bishop to g3 is played, of course, saving the bishop. Bishop to h7, now, as I said, this bishop was a tactical liability on the, on the e4 square, so uh, Hare Krishna removes it. Queen to e2, 
king to g7, solidifying his king position, rook a to d1, and now Kramnik's pieces are becoming, uh, let's say, uh, optimal. And now every piece is developed to the best possible square. I think that the only better square for this knight would be the, d, uh, the d5 square, but for now f3 is okay as well. Now we have knight f to e4 uh, entering the center, and now you can see that uh, black is gaining some sort of initiative and that then the knights are much better than white's bishops because first of all the center is closed the scope of the dark squared bishop on g3 is reduced very much and the bishop on a2 is good but it's definitely not as good as those two knights and now kramnik finds uh, i would say the best way to fight in this position he plays rook to d5 and now even though engines would tell you this is a bad move it actually offers uh, white too many attacking possibilities for, for black to follow all of them and for black to be able to calculate all of them. But Tala Hare Krishna plays f5, which is the best move, and it uh, gives black almost a winning advantage. This is now minus one for black. But Kramnik's next move is uh, why uh, why this game was recommended recommended to me to be uh, to, an, to be analyzed on the channel, and I am very much thankful for that because it's a brilliant move. And once again, uh, if you ask the engines, this move is losing. But if you ask a human, would he like to play against this move? I don't think anybody would say he would be happy to play th this position with black after what Kramnik played. Uh, he sacrificed a rook, and uh, it was a rook for a couple of pawns, so, so not an easy decision to make. I mean, Passive play would be, let's say, rook e to d1, doubling rooks, pressuring the d6 pawn. I mean, you have some sort of play in this position, but black's pawns are becoming very dangerous and they are about to, to cramp your pieces down, chase away your knight, chase away your bishop, get your pieces to inferior squares and black would simply win this position. So Kramnik plays uh, rook takes e5. And this, of course, now... Uh, can't be taken with the queen, it could be taken, taken with the pawn, but uh, whichever way black captures, white is getting at least three pawns, because now after d takes e5, bishop takes e5 check, the bishop is of course defended by the knight, and after knight to f6, which by the way uh, was the best move, even though it's tactically uh, uncovering an attack on the queen, uh, because now uh, white can play uh, queen takes b5, so this is now three pawns for the rook, and uh, it's six pawns for white, three pawns for black, and black has two rooks. However, uh, in this position, if black doesn't uh, capitalize on his advantage immediately, then white is about to create three connected past pawns, which are getting nearer and nearer to the black uh, black's seventh and eighth rank, and this is becoming more and more dangerous. This position, of course, is technically completely losing for Kramnik. However, if you are playing this against white, I'm not sure that you could defend perfectly if you tried ten times. We have knights to e4 now. Getting knights to the center, defending the queen indirectly, so this rook isn't a problem anymore. We have bishop to d4, uh, solidifying his center before pushing the pawns. Rook f to d8 h3, making some luft, rook to b8, attacking the queen and the b2 pawn, queen to e2, defending the pawn, of course, and now bishop to g8. This was a slight inaccuracy. The best move was queen to b7, just putting more pressure on the b2 pawn and forcing it forward or, or forcing additional defenders to jump in, which could either be done with c4, uh, with rook to b1 or something else. So this would be the best way for Pentala Hare Krishna to play, to simply put on more pressure on Kramnik's dubious sacrifice but he plays bishop to g8 which is an okay move he's aiming to to exchange pieces but kramnik of course declines uh bishop to b1 we have queen to b7 b4 advancing the pawns rook to e8 c4 and now uh, the best move was uh queen to e3 uh but c4 was okay as well i think i think c4 is better from a human perspective now we have a queen to c6 uh, by Pentala Hare Krishna, and this is the turning point of the game. This was a clear blunder, because uh, the best move, first of all, was queen to a6. And if queen to a6, this is pinning the pawn to the to the queen and uh, threatening to exchange queens. And if they exchange the queens, then the rook for three pawns is completely winning for black. So after this, uh, white would have to play queen to b2, and the pawn on c4 would simply drop bishop takes c4, and... This would be just winning for black. Those two pawns can't cope with the rook. But after queen to c6 uh, and queen to b2, 
The same variation doesn't really work. It's really hard to see, but if bishop takes e4, this is just winning for white because of knight to e5 attacking bishop and queen. And now after queen to e6, bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, and bishop takes e4 with check is, you can see, just winning. So after queen to b2, uh, white can't take the pawn. Uh, the same thing goes if he takes with the queen, it just doesn't work. So he played uh, rook b to d8. Now c5 was played, and this position is now, you can see, getting more and more menacing for black, and I think it's just practically winning. Uh, queen to e6, b5, plus 1 for white, uh, king to f8, uh, this was a blunder, this was a too passive move, the best move for black uh, here was queen to b3, trying to exchange queens, and if uh, uh, queen to a1, the, the b-pawn can't be taken, because if queen takes b5, bishop e4 is winning, winning the knight. So he can't take the b5 pawn, but after queen to a1 he could have tried something else, and it's at least making the, the white queen more passive. But he played king to f8, which is just an absurd move, a very bad move. c6, two squares away from queening. g4, a blunder, a counterattack which doesn't really do that much. h takes g4, f takes g4, bishop takes e4, taking the knight, g takes f3, and now bishop takes f6, not taking on f3. Bishop takes f6, is threatening to uncover an attack on the queen, uh, if the king should move. And it's uh, tactically now uh, making black's position unholdable. He just can't defend this, even though he's at, at this moment he is an exchange up, but he just can't, he just can't hold this position. We have rook to d6 now, uh, bishop to g7 check. King to f7, and now you can see the, 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 the problems are insurmountable. Bishop to e5 and Pantala Hare Krishna resigned. Of course, uh, if you try to find some moves for black here, uh, the best move would be bishop to h7, trying to exchange some pieces. But now simply bishop to f3, declining a trade, and once again, this bishop is defended too many times. This is now just a huge advantage for white. These three pawns are... are are too strong. So Metala Hare Krishna decided to resign. But if you if you go back to the position in which uh, Vladimir Kramnik sacrificed the rook, uh, let me just come back to that. Uh, okay, so this is a, a normal closed Royal Lopez in which neither side really has an advantage. Both sides have uh, finished their middle game plans. And after this aggressive move knight to e4 by Pentala Hare Krishna, rook to d5 doesn't look that strong. It doesn't look that... Uh, that aggressive, but in the intention behind the move was hyper aggressive. So after f5, he could have also taken the d6 pawn. I think both are okay. But the sacrifice is actually very obvious, although I'm not sure that many people would decide to, to play it. But definitely uh, a remarkable conception, con conception by Vladimir Kramnik. And after rook e5, d5, bishop e5, knight f6, queen takes b5. Uh, I think I would actually rather have white here, because it's really hard to, to stop the pawns. Okay, everybody, uh, I hope uh, you like this tactical game by Vladimir Karamnik, his Rook Sacrifice. Thanks once again for the suggestion. If you have a game you would like to see covered, please say so in the comments below. And stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.